All right, so I'm guessing you guys are getting a little sick of me uh, washing cars here. The last uh, month it has been nothing but washing cars. Uh, but this is, I think, a video that uh, a lot of people have uh, been waiting to see, or at least a lot of people that care about washing cars. Specifically, if you have a Japanese car that has black paint or dark paint on it. Uh, and so I've been forced to change my procedure uh, quite a bit in order to to hopefully you know, I haven't gotten the light out on this thing since I've uh, since we've we've coded it since we corrected it and coded it with uh, we ended up using uh, CarPro Essence to co coat and fill the thing a little bit and then we have a Secrets UK topped with a second layer of Secrets TIO2 and then I have a coat of reload on, on my S2000 so I'm going to go through that the, the difference in procedure and how I how I wash it differently uh, than my other cars and some of the steps that I find very unnecessary on the other cars I'm going to do on this. Uh, so the first noticeable change uh, is the type of uh, wash pad that I use. Um, you, know, you would think that the sponge, uh, this is a recommendation of my, uh, my buddy uh, Bradley Nielsen. Uh, these are, uh, these are a, a sponge from, uh, from Kamikaze. I'm certain he doesn't make them, uh, but these are a Japanese, uh, very, very soft sponge. Uh, and you know, at first glance, you would think, well, a sponge would scratch or would have a higher probability of scratching than a, than a microfiber wash pad or some other merino wash pad. But uh, I'm telling you, if you've ever held one of these things, especially once they get wet, it's pretty much the softest thing on the planet. Uh, and so uh, what, the, what it, the first procedural change, of course, is that I'm going to use these. And I'll generally have a few of them in the bucket. Um, you know, I'm not a big, uh, a big fan of, I don't really, don't really get why you would need a wash pad for the top of the car and a wash pad for the bottom of the car. Uh, you know, especially if you're going to throw your wash, uh, your wash you know, sponge or pad in the washer uh, to clean it because the washer is going to shake out all the sand and dirt and then I throw it in the dryer to get even more stuff out of it so that I have basically a brand new, uh, these have been used a few times, basically I have a brand new wash media. Uh, and so I don't really understand the point of, of, of okay, so I'm going to use something on the hood, the roof, and sort of the top of the fenders and then I'm going to go grab another pad to wash the dirtier part of the car so I can understand it would make sense if you're washing the bottom of the car first and then you wouldn't want to use that pad to wash the top of the car that makes perfect sense to me uh, but using two of them to uh, to to uh, to, to wash the car if you're washing in a regular car you know, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense uh, but for this, uh, what I do, uh, just to be certain, uh, I don't have buildup in the sponge, which I doubt I would have, uh, I use four of them. And so I just uh, use this and I'll cycle through. So I use this, do three or four panels, uh, and then we'll toss it in the cabinet. And then grab the next one, do three or four panels, and toss it in the cabinet. Uh, I throw them in the bucket so that they're soaking and whatever. Maybe it softens it up a little bit. But again, I, I doubt that that really changes anything. But I throw all four of them in the bucket. And then as I, you know, as I finish up, uh, or as I finish up a few panels, I just toss it in there just to, just to be sure I don't have to, uh, dirt build up on this just to hopefully eliminate the chance. Again, probably an unnecessary step. Uh, I know some people are so adamant about using all kinds of different wash pads when you're washing the car. I don't think it really matters all that much. So anyway, I'm going to use a two bucket method, kamikaze sponge, uh, one soap bucket, one rinse bucket. I'm going to cycle through four of these in a wash. Uh, so I bought uh, well, about a dozen of them. Uh, and, uh, and, and what you'll notice also, uh, the reason why I wouldn't use these on a regular car, you'll see how clunky they are. Uh, they're thinner here in the center. And so when you grab it, what happens is they kind of get droopy and loopy. And so I'll show you that. And so I don't, I don't like to use them if I don't have to. Uh, my GT3, my, uh, my Raptors, I just haven't had a need for them. The, the IncrediPad uh, XL is awesome for, for doing that. So that's procedural change one. Uh, I'm going to change up and test out a few, uh, a few other processes with, with soap. Uh, I think people are probably right. I'm probably using too much soap. Uh, and you know, it's a bit irresponsible that uh, I have one, two, three, four, 
I have five gallons of, uh, of Adam's car shampoo sitting over there. And then I have some Optimum car wash that I've thrown away. I've got Reset. I've got all these different soaps uh, that I understand that most people don't have. Uh, and so I just, I know five ounces has worked. Uh, I'm gonna try a little different procedure here in that I put 500 ml of water in. I'm gonna add 100 ml of soap. Uh, so that would be what closer to two and a half, three ounces or three ounces it would be 100 mls. So I'm gonna go from 150 to 100, which you know was a 50% decrease in the amount of soap that I'm using. We'll see how that foams up. Uh, I think one of the issues is that I've been having, uh, you know, the soap sitting on the bottom and, and it's actually become, you know, because I have so much soap concentration uh, that it isn't really all that soluble. Uh, plus uh, for this, I don't need as much soap for this car, but uh, again, I'm gonna show you the, the procedure here uh, where that, that's a little different than, than normal. So um, the other step change before we go out and rinse the car off and, and work through the process is I use deionized water from start to finish. Uh, and so I turn it on right from the beginning uh, after I'm done with the wheels. Uh, so after I'm done cleaning the wheels, which the procedure isn't any different there. So wheels and tires are done. I switch to DI water and then I'm gonna use DI water throughout. That way I'm certain that, because uh, uh, generally I'm not gonna dry the car, uh, that way I'm certain that, that I'll have um, um, you know, very little chance of having any water spotting uh, because I'm going to let, after I'm going to blow the car off and then let it air dry the rest of the way. All right, so let's get set up to rinse and uh, we'll keep working through the process here. So before you start whining about how uh, oh, it's not a clean, it's not even a dirty car, it's freaking dirty. I mean, we've got tons of dirt. I mean, I've got, you know, the dirt all over the bugs all over the thing. Uh, I haven't washed it in the month and a half oh shoot we were down at uh i was down getting the the wheels and tires and brakes done it was dirty when i took it there i drove it in the rain a half you know half a dozen times uh and so uh, again when you're under the lights here 6500k this 1080p camera um it's just not you it's, you can't pick up the dirt like you can in person uh and so uh, again say whatever you want but uh but the car is dirty, it's really dirty, it needs to be cleaned. Uh, another thing that really kind of odd, like it, when we had, when I have the, and I, I guess I knew that this would happen, the whole discussion of foaming versus not foaming in the last video, and this like excuse of people that are in the Northeast, like it's something different. Dirt is dirt. I understand there's salt and things like that, but I take uh, a, a pressure washer and I spray it off. So theoretically, if I have a coating or I have wax or I have sealant on the paint, salt gets on the car, I spray the salt off. Uh, yes, I've got to come back and wash it, but bugs, salt, dirt, mud, mud specifically, mud is the only thing that baffles me the most. I mean, mud comes off easily off of anything. Uh, and so, I don't know, to me, it just seems like dirt is dirt. Uh, and I've lived in the Northeast for, for, for two thirds of my life. So I, I get it, I'm not an idiot. Uh, so anyway, let's start rinsing and uh, I'll keep yelling at you along the way here. So no change other than rinsing with DI water, no change the procedure here. Again, I'm using a 40 degree nozzle. I'm running right at 1200 PSI. And then of course, you know, this pressure washer is 2.8 gallons a minute. I mean, who knows what we're actually flowing right now, but it was because I'm, I'm dumbing down the pressure a little bit with the, with the 6.0 orifice nozzle, uh, but you know, we're, we're using a, a machine or a pump that, that flows 2.8 gallons per minute at 2,000 PSI. So I'm actually probably flowing a little bit more than that. at this lower pressure. All right, car's rinsed. I'm gonna, you've seen me, you've seen me prep the foam cannon a hundred times. Yeah, let's, let's do it on camera here. All right, so I'm gonna have 100 ml of soap. I'll grab the rest of the soap here. Put a little bit on the sponge. Let's see if we can't mix this up a little better. 
Hopefully I don't get my thumb stuck in there. All right, so let's go, I'm gonna go fill this up the rest of the way and we'll foam the car. All right, so rinsing off the foam versus not rinsing off the foam is, again, I think there's lots of bugs and stuff on here. This soap, this is, this is my, this is my experience. This soap, this Adams pH neutral soap isn't doing jack for, or is doing very little for, for emulsifying or breaking down the dirt. Uh, and so the, the, what I'm doing instead, this is, this is my, these are my findings. What I'm doing instead by foaming the cars, I'm getting a layer of lubrication on the surface. Hopefully, um, while I'm lubricating, the foam is running off or the soap is running off the car, maybe helping, helping pull, so, or, you know, again, I don't think it's lifting anything. It might grab and lift a few pieces of dirt that didn't get sprayed off. Uh, but I think in general, we sprayed off most of the dirt that's coming off without any kind of touching, you know, so now I need to touch the paint. Uh, and so what I'm doing is I'm gonna get this layer of soap on the paint so that I can then, um, you know, touch it and remove it. Uh, and I'm gonna show you how they, I would do this a little differently on, on this car just because of the really soft black paint. Yeah. It's a little runnier than I normally get. But not bad. So I'll continue to play with the dilution of that. But yeah, we got the job done. We got some soap on the car. I'll take the rest and pour it in the bucket. So we'll let this dwell for a couple of minutes. Usually by the time I get my other buckets, my wash bucket set up, this is ready to, ready to wash. So let me make another point while we're here. So I got soap on those two, these two are gone. I have to think a little bit differently now than I once did. You know, especially when, you know, when I first started making these videos, because now I have access that I may have not, that I certainly didn't have before. Or I can buy all this stuff wholesale. A lot of the stuff I get for free to test. And so I have to ask myself, you know, is the procedure, is what I'm doing lazy? or unnecessary, you know, or, or, or is something I'm skipping, is, is a step that I'm skipping being lazy or is it just, you know, do I find it to be unnecessary? And so one of the things I was thinking about with my foam cannon, so I have my original MTM foam cannon, which I bought, I don't know, eight years ago, whenever, whenever they came out, right? So seven, eight years ago, nine years ago, however long I've had my Krenzel 1122, that's how long I've had my original foam cannon. The only thing I've replaced on it is I pulled the original zinc plug off it and put a stainless steel one on. Uh, and uh, I haven't had any, you know, any issues with it. The, the, what happened is this, the, uh, the zinc plug rusted out. And I thought the foam cannon was, was bad. And that's why, I re re that's why I bought the PF22 several years ago. And so I never run fresh water through them. I just simply use them. And then I just, I don't, you know, I don't ever rinse them out. I just throw them on the shelf and use them the next day. So I, I don't think, uh, at least from my lazy testing, uh, I haven't had a need to do anything with those. Uh, I haven't had a need to mess with them. They just work. So I haven't run the soap out. I've used all different types of soaps. I've run APC through them. I've run iron removing soaps through them. I've run, you know, chemical gas citrus wash through them, Carpa Reset, Adams, Optimum, Brios, you name it. I've run, I've tested all kinds of like one-off soaps from some companies and uh, no, no issues. So, you know, I, I would, uh, I would tell you, I don't think you have to worry about obsessing over running water through your, your foam cannon because they're pretty much bulletproof. At least they have been for me. Now, I think the bigger issue if your foam cannon ever gets clogged up is more hard water than anything. It's not, it's not from the soap. All right. So here's the, here's the procedural change. So again, I've got some other, got some, some of these, you know, sitting here ready to go. I want to actually take them from my rinse bucket, keep them in my soap bucket so that they stay, you know, relatively clean. But 
I, I think this is the theme of this current month, month of washing and my videos that I'm making and talking about not getting crazy about, uh, about things that don't matter. Even if you're dealing with soap, or I'm sorry, salt and cinders and things like that, you, on the rinse phase, you've blown off most of it and you've got the residue left over, right? Even if you've gone for weeks, you should be able to spray uh, you know, 75% of that, 80% of it off. And so now, you know, your soap has run off and you have a nice lubricated surface. We have pH neutral soap all over the car. And so now we're gonna touch it and just agitate in order to be able to lift a large percentage. So let's say another, you know, if let's say we were 75% clean, now we're 95% clean or 90% clean. And then the last 10 is all that dislodged dirt from us touching the soap or touching the surface is now removed. And so here's my procedure. So first thing, now oh, the water's run out of this, but the first thing with these sponges, they even just grabbing it in the center, they get kind of droopy and floppy. So I'd, I'd mentioned that before. So we're gonna use the, whatever you call this, the honeycombed uh, surface on the paint. And without any pressure, I'm gonna do two swipes. That's my big procedural change. In the rinse bucket, on the wash bucket, boom. Boom. No pressure, just dragging it across the surface. Boom, boom. I tend to inspect it with my hand to make sure that I don't have any sand particles or anything, you know, that, that have built up. This stuff tends to drop it really well. Obviously windows, I don't need to take the same care as the rest. The other thing that I don't do is I don't worry about going down on the grit guard, you know, I just dunk it in there, make sure it's somewhat clean, and then move on with my life. Move on to the next panel. So one of the really difficult things and frustrating parts about this car and not being able to do, like with the windshield here, I'm applying some pressure, you know, I'm agitating and going back and forth, you know, I'm really cleaning the surface. I can't do that with the rest of the paint. It's just something you can't, you can't do. Otherwise you're gonna scratch it, even with the coating. Because remember, the coating is laying on the surface. And if you'd, if you really looked at the, how this stuff works, I mean the coating really doesn't bond to the surface. You know, it's not bonding to the clear coat. It's kind of laying on top of it. And so hopefully, hopefully it bonds well enough, you know, with all, on all the little scratches and little pits and areas of the paint that it stays on there, right? But the coating takes on the characteristic of the, of the surface of the paint. Oh, I think I already did that, right? So if your paint is really soft and prone to scratching, then guess what? Your coating will be really soft and prone to scratching. So that's why we have to then take this measure. Now it'll help to some extent because we've added, you know, my guess with the two layers of C-quartz, we've added, you know, two, maybe two and a half microns of material to the top of the clear coat, but it's still going to take on the characteristic of the paint to a large extent. That's why all this anti-scratching crap with coatings is largely a load of crap. All right, so this sponge, I did the entire top section, so again, not super dirty, but I'll take this. Just seems like the right thing to do. And everybody, you can draw your lines wherever you want. And I'll throw this one aside. We'll call that one done. So now let's do the front section of the car. So next, uh, next thing I'll be doing is I'm gonna get this. I gotta get this really bad. You know, probably first or second gen Expel off of the uh, off the front clip here because there's the line right down the middle. 
So this is the really frustrating part here, is that all the bugs and stuff, it's kind of hard to get them off. And then what I'll do here with this, so I think what I'll probably procedurally do is every fourth wash, so now on the, on the clear film I can be a little bit more aggressive, but on the fourth, every, every fourth wash is when I'll do either reload or ECH, ECH2O, do some sort of additional treatment and actually dry the car and then that's when I'll attack the maybe leftover bug heavier you know stuff that maybe didn't come off in a wash quite you know a hundred percent so the you know, the big question will be what do I end up doing with this long term I think a lot of the testing that I'm doing with having the car fully wrapped, having the GT3 RS fully wrapped will help me figure out what I'm gonna do with this in a longer term. So again, I'm still not applying any pressure even on the clear film. Now clear film is a little different in that because it's so thick, you know, you've got, what are these, seven, eight microns thick, something like that? I don't know what they are. I might be making that up. Might be more than that. But the thickness is considerably more than, than the coating is. And so this generally will not take on the characteristic of the paint, or at least certainly not nearly as much as just a coated surface would. but I still want to use care because the clear film will swirl and scratch as well. So you just notice, so I just did the bumper. I'm coming all the way around. This is another one of those moments where I say, I don't, I don't overcomplicate this. Like, I don't, we're not picking up massive amounts of, when it's not like we're picking up boulders on the front bumper, mainly bug jerky. And so I did three swipes there. And I think we'll survive. So now we'll do this lower section on both sides and then we'll ditch the uh, ditch this sponge and go work on the trunk. So I just err on the side of putting this back in the bucket as much as possible. All right, so this one's done. And then by the way, I just take these and throw them in the washer with my microfiber towels. I also dry them as well in the dryer on Delicate. Another thing to, to mention here, you know, this car has C-Quartz on it, where the, my new Raptor and the GT3 RS both have kamikaze on it. And the kamikaze is very different than this. This looks extremely synthetic to me. Not as synthetic as some of the others. As like, um, Ceramic Pro is the worst. It looks ridiculous to me. Um, you know, taking out all the marketing BS and all the goofy crap that they do and claims that they make, I don't, really care as much about that. They do whatever they want. Um, but the look of it is really odd to me. Especially when you slop on a bunch of layers of it. Even though all those layers 
become parasitic. It's all marketing BS. But I think if I was a professional detailer, I would probably have Ceramic Pro just to sell against it, <laughs> right? So I would have it as my product line. This is then, you know, if, get people in the door and then talk them out of it. Just have a secondary option. Maybe that's a little too dishonest, I don't know. I'm not as worried about the bottom of the wing because it's not as dirty. So anyway, the, I think I'm really digging the kamikaze. But I've only done two washes with it, so don't get too crazy yet. But it looks, looks a lot more natural, looks less cartoony, less synthetic even though all this stuff is synthetic. Clear coat is, well, I guess clear coat, because it depends, but you know, urethane is organic, so. Oops, wrong way. Don't panic, we'll be okay. It stinks, because the thing gets so dirty, I just wanna, I just wanna clean it. But I have to do this very superficial cleaning. It's like, would I rather have a little bit of as Todd Cooper writer would say, some crunchies on the paint, or would I rather have it all scratched up? Again, I'm revisiting the bucket a lot more than I normally would. And I'm not going over the surface as many times, especially on this really dirty area. I want to revisit the bucket often. Get this, this is gonna be sweet. But uh, I just, I got off the phone. I was talking with Jason Kilmer yesterday. I don't mean to name drop for those of you guys who aren't like super into detailing, but Jason Kilmer is regarded as, you know, one of the best wet sanders in the world. And so I'm gonna go to the, go over to the junkyard down the street. I'm gonna get a bunch of panels. And then at the end of mobile tech, me, Jason, uh, Andy Ward, who's Proficient X, we're all gonna do, we're gonna do a bunch of videos talking about, you know, talking about and actually doing, you know, wet sanding different panels. And, which I'm really excited about. I'm always ex excited to hone my, or learn new things learn new skills. And for whatever reason, I've chosen this whole washing cars thing as something that I would like to become an expert in. It's really gonna be sad for people that don't like YouTubers that I'm gonna keep making lots of videos and doing this YouTube thing and actually know what I'm doing. That's gonna be frustrating for some, but I think it's cool. I just watched that, oh, I'm gonna ditch this pad. So now we'll do the doors, lower panels with the last pad. Probably not necessary, because we keep revisiting the same buckets anyway, but I don't know, it makes me, the procedure seems to be working. And I think it's a step that's worth, you know, worthwhile. So then I guess an argument could be, why don't I use all 12 sponges? I don't know. Four just seems right. Anyway, I was watching, uh, I was watching that Jim Carrey, Andy Kaufman documentary thing. And if you haven't seen it, you know, it's on Netflix. You know, that thing's kind of weird. Jim Carrey's a weird dude. I think we all knew that. But at, at minute, just just trust me on this. At minute, oh shoot, I forgot to come back over here. It's minute 103 and 30 seconds. He's talking about the Truman Show and how it applies to his life. 
and how you know, people have a tendency, me especially, I had a tendency to do whatever's necessary, even if you have to fake it to make it, to be successful. You know, and he uses, it's funny how, it, how he says this, but he uses a Wall Street broker, Wall Street broker, Wall Street professional as an example, and says, you know, you go to Wall Street, you're on Wall Street, you put your monkey suit on, you may even lie, cheat, and steal if you need to, in order to have some some show or some some what you know perceived success, and then that it's all a bunch of load, it's all, all a load of crap. And so that's a, it just really resonated with me. Just go go listen to it. It's a lot of sort of a lot. It explains a lot what's happened to me, you know, by accident, where I've given up this whole. There's the the show, and just doing that. That's how Obsessed Garage exists. And so when I th say, you know, I don't want your help, I don't want your opinion, you know, that's just me doing me. It's the truth. I really don't want your help. Nobody wants your help. Nobody wants anybody's opinion. What they might want is their, you know, their their life experience and, and their, you know, a story to help that might apply to them. I'll go check that out. It, the documentary's okay, but just that one line, it's like 30 seconds long, it just resonated with me. You know, this amazing whole obsessed garage thing that's happened to me. And then to have you know, Mosmatic flew to me to show me the prototype that we'd, I'd, been, I'd asked for and be able to influence other people in a positive way, which then in turn has influenced the market of these cool things that I think is so interesting. It's like, it's just magic, man. And so to give up the proverbial monkey suit and do and be the real you man it's powerful and so I'm writing that and the reason why it resonated so much I think is because I'm attempting to write that I've started my GT3 RS journal and I was on Renlist you know looking at my journal and you know linking back to this to this you know, to the text that I'm writing, you know, introducing or inputting, putting photos into it as well. There's clear film on this, by the way. And I stumbled upon a post. I'm halfway through pouring out my soul into this, writing this, 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 this journal, the, the initial entry into the GT3 RS journal for Renless, because you know, Renless is what got this all started. And then I see a post you know, Shmi 150 had a, uh, was it a Gal, Gal Brun, a, a uh, green, yellow, the same color that Sean's getting. Sean Grower, who, you know, co-hosts the podcast with me now, but was having his made, and he was on the assembly line. And then all these people, and it's just really discouraging to me. All of these, in a lot of cases, you know, successful and a lot of times really intelligent guys it just has this massive sense of entitlement to say how much they hated Shmi and how you know, his name's Tim you know and how much of a loser he was and all this crazy crap is just really discouraging to me I'm like man the dude's just living a dream you know he built a successful business I'm not sure what Tim did, but I think maybe something in software. So now he's able to buy all these cars, and then he decided to put himself out there and share it. And, you know, he has a slight lisp. I'm sure he's, you know, somewhat subconscious about that. I'm, I'm not, that would be my guess. Um, just like I'm, you know, subconscious about my, my, my compulsion. And, uh, and he's chosen to put himself out there, and then these guys just attacked. I'm like, man, it was just it was really disappointing. And... So, 
then this, you know, watching this segment of just pulling this little section out of this, you know, what Jim Carrey's talking about, figuring out where's the wormhole, where's the psych hole, I think he calls it, where you figure out how to not have to do that what per, that perceived successful version of you and just do you and and you'll you'll have some some success that comes from it and anyway, i'm getting a little too deep here on showing how to wash my black car all right so let's fire up the pressure washer rinse this thing off before i start getting drying soap not that it matters because it's ph balanced I've got all kinds of crazy stuff coming to the wash bay. You know, I'm not, I, 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 keep, I keep thinking I'll probably do drains out here and probably repave this after I build the garage. You know, sometime in the next year or so. But I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be modifying the boom pole and doing two boom poles because I'm gonna be doing the Mosmatic drying system out here. They have a uh, dual motored custom installed drying system that I'm going to be doing out here. It's going to be amazing. So I'm going to be sharing that, my findings there. So I'll be testing out some new boom pole configurations out here. For those of you guys that are looking to build custom, uh, you know, custom installs like this. I'm also working with Krenzla. They custom install uh, pressure washing solutions, so the, I don't want to call any of it low end because it's all high end, but the, I, I want the K1622 to work just like the 1122. So my, my cart model pressure washing system, I want the one for on wall, I want it to work identically. I don't want it to work uh, where it, you know, it runs all the time. And so I actually physically went up to New York City, <laughs> how cool is this? And I met with Ludwig uh, Krenzla to talk about this, you know, about, building a machine that we want, if you will. But I mean, I get why people like this kind of beating, you know, this, this level of beating. It's cool, but I'm not willing to deal with the look. The look doesn't look as good as something like the Kamikaze ISM. Combined with the simple fact that it probably wouldn't look as good as this if I didn't have the guy, you know, if Corey wasn't there installing it for me. It is more complicated to install. But, you know, it's still a great product, great company, great people, great support. It's a great product for a consumer level. That's the other thing I really dislike about all this is consumer level and professional level. Just make a good one. The guys that are going to do the installs themselves aren't going to professionals anyway, and the guys that are going to professionals aren't going to do it themselves. So just make one coating and make it the best. Why do we need 10 of them? All right, so we're all rinsed. I'm going to push some of this water out of here. Oh wait, I got to blow off this wheel. And no, this is not going to blow dirt all over it. It's not how this game works. But it'd be really cool to have a dedicated drying system out here. Oh, you know what I forgot to do first? Hit this with some hides. This is Hyde's serum rust stopper. And just hit the hit the rotors really fast. I find that hitting them like that and then just blowing it off, blowing off the excess seems to work pretty well. I'm excited to go take some photos of this.
All right, so that's it. That's the black car washing procedure. What I, want, what I tr attempt to make sure I do is blow off all the main top surfaces. Uh, so I'm not gonna go back, I'm not gonna dry it, I'm not gonna touch it. Uh, and so, again, every fourth wash or, show or so as well, I'll go and dry. I'll do all the door jams and all of that stuff. But for now, what I do is blow out like, you know, the gas area here, I just blow out the water. I blow out the water in the door jams and kind of leave it leave it be, uh, touch it as little as possible. So I would call this a, I don't know, I'd call it a, an 80%, 85% clean. It's not the same clean that I normally like to get because a lot of times I get most of the extra cleaning done uh, when, I'm, when I'm wiping, when I'm touching, touching the surface. So again, if I keep this car, uh, what I'll most likely end up doing uh, after I've tested the wrap for a while, uh, I don't think edges would bother me as much on this one because it's black too because then I could wash it normally and still make it look good uh, but we would have to compound off all of this coating that's on the on the thing so I might as well wait a while for that so you know it, in inspecting and it looks like you know my procedures working you know I'm not scratching the surface so the car is really holding up uh, and uh, and so I mean I guess it's a success so anyway, that's my current procedure. That's what I'll be doing, you know, most of the time, three out of four washes. The fourth wash, again, I'll do some touching of the paint very lightly uh, using uh, probably ECH2O and then using Reload to help with, with water spotting. So anyway, that's the procedure. Make sure you check out, uh, I deal with the wheels and tires on my uh, tire prepping procedure video. Uh, I'm not sure if that one came out before or after this one. I think it's probably before. Uh, so anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, lots of S2000 content coming. Next S2000 video will be uh, talking about uh, what is a CR, how is a CR different from a regular S2000, and then the follow-up to that video will be what did I do to this thing. So I'm going to do a list and I need to get uh, in a spreadsheet and break down what I spent on this thing. So it's going to be a price breakdown of every part and piece and I'm going to talk through all the modifications I've done and, uh, and what I think I did right, what I think I did wrong, what would I do again, what would I change. So, so that video is coming and then obviously some driving stuff. I've already talked to my buddy Clay. We're going to go out and do some rolls of, uh, do a few pulls of the S2000, the modified S2000 versus the GT3 RS. Uh, and then once I get my Dundon headers, we'll probably do it again and see, see what happens. Uh, and we might, we'll see, we'll see what we can do. I might try to get it out to the uh, racetrack or something like that uh, to um, the uh, drag strip to race the two cars from a dig. We'll see what happens. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, I'll stay tuned for more crazy as always. So what happens when the, when the force pulls you back, your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor, to the floor, to the floor.